So before we get into this interview, a little bit of housekeeping. Obviously, there are some directors, filmmakers, creatives that can't make it to the festival because it can be a bit of a trek, especially if you're living in America or Spain or Germany or France or wherever. You know, it can be a bit of a trek. So what I decided to do again was to get some pre-recorded stuff done. I got on the old Zoom stream yards, whatever people wanted me to get onto, I got onto them. And we did some remote calls, pre-recorded stuff, stuff awesome awesome interviews with some great great filmmakers that i can't wait for you to listen to right now just because you can't get here you should still get your q a and it should still be with me because i'm the best one you're going to be getting a few of these throughout the week scattered around this is nerdly out loud nerdly tv we are at romford the romford film festival we love the romford film festival we're going to continue coming back here every single year as long as they will have us if you've been living under a rock and you have not seen this nerdly has got themselves into a little position where we are in partnership with Shepka Productions, The Baby in the Basket, which is a gothic horror. He's joined up with Flickering Myth to partner up and make this movie, and then they came to us and asked Nerdly to jump on board too. Absolutely, we were going to do that, and we did a crowdfunder. The crowdfunder went amazing. It's still ongoing, so you can go to Kickstarter, type in The Baby in the Basket. I'll put links all over the place. Type in The Baby in the Basket, Give a pound, give £10, but only give what you can. We don't want people giving money they don't have. Please do all those wonderful things. Like, subscribe, bell, all of it. Brilliant stuff. Let's get into today's interview, which will be with whoever's in the title. But if you're not at Romford, get yourself there. Get yourself to the cinema. We are showing a smorgasbord of awesome movies. at Romford, inside Romford Film Festival, I like to say. Romford, it is still really cool to be inside you, so thank you for letting me do that. And uh, we have got director Dave Gardner of Short Movie Nuts, which does what it says on the tin. It's yeah. pretty nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, how are you tonight? How are you this fine evening? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Not too bad. How are yourself? Of I'm awesome, man. I'm uh, obviously I'm pre-recording these before we go down to the festival, but I'm starting to look forward to it. We've got some amazing movies this year, and, and Nuts oh, is okay. definitely up there with the best of them. Oh, so it it was just good to sit down and 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 have a little chat. But before we get into the short and before we talk about the movie, um, a little bit about Dave. Um, take us back a little bit, uh, a little bit about your background, how you got into the filmmaking world and why the hell you would do it <laughs> um well always been a big film guy it's something sort of i've loved all my life uh that and music kind of my two main passions and then um i guess it's sort of really in lockdown you know mm. had a little bit of a a moment of thinking that um time is precious and you don't know sort of what's around the corner um and best to do something that you are passionate about with the the time that we have so yeah i just started writing some scripts in lockdown um and then in 2021 made my my first short film just a really you know no budget mockumentary and then um once i kind of got that got the uh the taste for it so yeah nuts is the the second short film that i've made so um, mockumentary style rather than documentary, would you say that the the humor side of things, the the you know the the lighter hearted affairs, is kind of where you like to 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 lie? Um, yes, um, but I mean, I would say probably with both of them, and then the the next thing that I'm working on, it's because I think that life is quite difficult and quite hard, and humor is our way of dealing with that you know quite often you know when i've had sort of sad moments or witnessed sad moments or anything like that the comedy is always sort of very closely follows it we we don't sort of we can't manage it for too long without making yeah. some sort of or, or just life presents it's just absurd and and funny in that way isn't it where you know you have a truly <laughs> tragic moment and then something absurd will happen and you'll think oh yeah so so that's kind of i think why i, I sort of have comedy and, and all the things i've written so far so in in your when you are writing things or when you're getting ready to make your short, 
what kind of inspires you? What do you sort of look towards? Is there anyone you sort of look towards in, in terms of inspires? Um, yeah, I guess so. I think, you know, um, probably, and maybe it's just because I'm working, what I'm working on at the moment, but the the writers that I really like um, are Steve Pemberton and Rhea Shearsmith. I really love the <laughs> stuff they do on Inside Number 9. Um, yeah. And I think they, they sort of obviously mix comedy more with horror. Horror is like another big love of mine. I love horror films. Um, but also I think they have quite a lot of pathos and sadness in their stuff as well, which I sort of react to quite well. Uh, so I guess, you know, off the top of my head, those would be the two writers that are immediately, I would say, I like and enjoy their work. So let's jump on a nuts. Okay. I'd love to. For... <laughs> I realized how that sounded there. <laughs> so, um, really, really, um, first of all, where the hell did this story come from? Where did this idea come from? What was the seed for nuts? um with with nuts it was literally just um i had that image in my head of somebody just walking down the road and then the opening shot of the film and i don't want to sort of give too much away or maybe we can but yeah the opening shot of it somebody walking down the road and then this sort of very strange thing happening and then i just sort of started to think about what that could mean like why did that sort of image pop into my mind and why when i was sort of sitting down to write as you do i'm sure lots of writers will say this in your kind of um thinking oh my god what am i going to write that one just kept coming back to me again and again and again so i just tried to sort of un unpack it and really think about what i liked about it and i suppose it goes back to what i was saying a minute ago about sort of life being quite sad and life being quite hard and um it feeling like um you are dealing with some really tough things that seem to have no logic to them or there's no sort of reasoning behind it it's just like oh my god this you know what what is happening and why is this happening um and then yeah and sort of using that as a metaphor to explain sort of i you know things that i've experienced and that men i know have experienced as well because it is you know as obviously as the title implies it's nuts um it is to do with it's got that double meaning of testicles and craziness yeah. um so i think it is although these things aren't exclusive to men i think it is um it's true isn't it that men are kind of pretty terrible about talking about their feelings and <laughs> and asking for help when they need it so that's that's in there too there's so many as well um there's you're talking about like the the testicle thing and and people like not sharing their feelings and whatnot it's led it's extremely led this short and when you when you really you can watch this shot and just enjoy it and have a laugh and then yeah. it and then it hits you with something but if you really really read into it there's so much going on there and was that always the idea that when you got to the turn towards the end of the movie obviously i'll not spoil it or anything yeah. but was that idea always there i think it was definitely the idea that he was struggling with something um <laughs> and that he wasn't willing to deal with that something and then it would be what he'd have to face at the end and you know and and, and come to terms with it and say that yeah okay this is difficult but um it is here and i have to deal with it i can't kind of put my head in the sand sand anymore um the idea about the thing that he's struggling with um came sort of fairly sort of uh, after a couple of drafts i think um based on you know personal experience had a similar sort of thing happen in my own life and um you know art is a good form of therapy isn't it so there there is uh an autobiographical element to it which i didn't really realize until the shoot to be perfectly honest with you <laughs> i sort of i wrote it and i was like meow, 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 yeah i do that and then i was on the shoot and i was like jesus christ i've like recreated this really traumatic <laughs> event <from my> life. <laughs> um, and i've now got to try and direct the actors and stuff but um but yeah we got through it <laughs> No, no, that's great. And, and talking about your actors, uh, Jonathan Cobb as uh, Justin, just what what a guy. But how obviously an, an actor would love to play this type of role, the, the layers that we have in there and everything. But how do you talk this guy into coming in and just basically getting kicked in the nuts? Yeah, well, we had to sort of be very careful about how we shot this. <laughs> the, the, uh, the opening shot is really the only proper dangerous one that we did uh but luckily billy herring the guy who who plays the the character who kicks john's nuts uh was <laughs> like had a, had gone on a stage combat training course um and and so yeah it was just really fortuitous and he was like oh yeah we'll do it like this 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 and this and and we did a trial run of it just outside my house where i am now i was just because we had like a an afternoon rehearsal 
and we tried it out just on my my phone um and i think he had like a one of the we had a cricket box in and things like that <laughs> but i mean i don't think that would have helped to be honest if it made contact um but yeah it looked great it just all immediately re- looked really great on camera it shot from like a really you know it's a long shot um that we did and it really works it, and, and with the sound mm. as well the sound kind of gives it a lot of uh impact so, so that was that was a question that I do have as well because as as doing podcasts and doing the sort of thing that I do, I'm I'm a sucker for a good sound effect. How <laughs> many how many hours did you find the search spend searching for the right nut shot? Yeah, I don't think it was that long. Um, <laughs> I, think, I, I think I just I searched for a kicking sound, and then there's one which is like a a proper crunch. Which mm-hmm. I did worry. It was like, is this too much? Because it's like a, you know. But um, we put it on there anyway. And then most, a lot of it's done with the drums as well. The drum soundtrack is a big part of it, of kind of giving that impact too. So yeah, it wasn't wasn't that long. I wish I could tell you it was a. I spent you know six months researching the perfect nut kicking noise. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the problem though, because I, I've like. Uh... I would have searched forever till I got the one that just <laughs> just felt right. And yeah. the one you're talking about, the the crunch one, absolutely, yeah. you nail that. By the way, because <laughs> I you. I just kind of like sit there and go, oh yeah yeah shit. yeah, like that, that's <laughs> the one right there. That's the one. <laughs> that's the doozy. <laughs> and uh, how, how much fun was it wrapping your lead actor up in bubble wrap? <laughs> yeah, that was great. Um, and it was so nice that it came off because obviously it was one of those sort of visuals. I had when you was writing the script of, of coming up with with that idea um and a really lovely woman called mama paul made that costume um i knew mama paul from doing uh theater shows so she'd like works and did the costumes on those and i asked her to make me me, me this bubble wrap suit and she said well i've never done it before but i'll give it a go <laughs> um and it, yeah again that was one of really lucky thing a friend of mine was like working uh he's like a, does deliveries for air conditioning firms and um, I just said, oh, has anyone got any bubble wrap? And he was like, literally, I've got a roll of about 5,000 <laughs> meters of bubble wrap in my my van. You can have it. And I was like, yes. So it all worked out. But yeah, the, the bubble wrap suit was really cool fun. It was incredibly hot, though. Mm, uh, and we imagine. were filming in August. So if um, we sort of continue with the cost of living crisis and nobody can afford to pay their heating, then I can recommend <laughs> bubble wrap as a great alternative to central heating it is very toasty and very warm <laughs> and and i know um you probably want to want to admit this because obviously it's behind the scenes stuff and you don't want to yeah. get you know fined or anything but did you push him over and roll him around on the floor <laughs> no i would never do that to, uh, to John. <laughs> i mean I'll, i only say that because i absolutely would have <laughs> should have tried that no no there was a few times where um i had to help him get into the suit it was like velcro uh to get him in the suit and there was a few bits by his groin that were, were very hard to do and i had to sort of ask his permission to to help him but he was fine no no <laughs> lines were crossed there was a uh, intimacy coordinators on set it was all good <laughs> i love it i love it and um you've already said that it was sort of a little bit biographical or it turned a little bit biographical so yeah it becomes a little bit of, of a cathartic thing for you as well but so that's what you take away from the movie what do you hope the audiences get from seeing nuts like the one takeaway sure well i think um if i can be a bit cheeky maybe have a couple of takeaways but i think no, like no, you're saying, they, they can just watch it and have fun you know it's a it is supposed to be a humorous story and um, yeah, I hope that sort of comes through. But I suppose that obviously the deeper underlying message is that um, everybody, but especially men, uh, do need to admit when they need help and that it is actually takes a lot of bravery to say, you know, I'm struggling um, and, you know, I can't handle this on my own. And that if somebody offers you help, there is no weakness. There's no shame in saying, yeah, thank you. I would love that. That would be really, really great. Um, yeah, so that that would be my takeaway. Awesome, awesome, and and um, the arc guys, arc indie, um, or it's just arc pictures now, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. How 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 did uh, you get involved with these guys? We've had a few of their shorts over the years, and I mean, yeah. they normally they tend to go for the the darker side of things. <laughs> so so, <laughs> yeah. what was it like getting them on board and and getting involved with those guys? It was great. Um, so I'd seen lots of short films that um, Dan, who is the is the K in Arc, Dan Keeble, um, had 
either directed or or shot um and i just thought he was a fantastic dop um so originally i just got in touch with dan and i just said look i'd love you to to shoot my next film because i'd shot the previous one and didn't really know what i was doing to be honest with you but you know it was a mockumentary so you can get away with it being a bit ragged um and dan just liked the script and he said you know if this uh if i show it to the rest of the arc team and and they like it would you be you know interested in us producing it and i was like absolutely yeah i mean <laughs> that would be great because obviously like you say they've they've got you know a load of films under their belt um and have had lots of success with festivals and and whatnot so yeah the, um and dan showed it to to alice and sam and uh, they both liked it as well so yeah that's how it came about i think it's very different from them but hopefully that that i think was something that appealed to them because obviously yeah they're, they're yeah. kind of specialized in horror but they've got other ones as well like split check is is more of a sort of drama um yeah and i think yeah, the other sense of humor of it appealed to them and, and the and the deeper underlying messages as well I kind of, I kind of have this image of Dan just being like, "What do you mean you want to shoot this during the day? Like, yeah. what, what, what daylight?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I was saying to him as well, I wanted to keep it a very kind of natural uh, in terms of the look of it because I thought that would make the absurdity of it feel more absurd. And I was saying we're just going to film with all like natural light, like try and keep the lighting down to a minimum. There were a few shots where we did use lights, but but Dan, I think, was a bit like working with natural available light what uh but he was great it was so good having him on set he's awesome love him awesome as well. yeah are you going to be working with those guys again do you think yeah i think so yeah um so yeah funnily enough uh i've sent over a like a application form to alice this evening um for the next short that i'm going to be doing um she's talking to sam and dan about it uh, and seeing if they're interested so yeah fingers crossed yeah hopefully in the next one i think we'll be made with those guys or or certainly with alice on board in some capacity so you not just going out to the festivals and everything you're pushing it out there um, and yeah. what kind of responses have you been getting from audiences festivals and all that yeah i mean it's really early days so far um i think romford might be it's like third public screening or maybe fourth um cool. But so far, yeah, people have really responded well to it. Um, that that sort of blend of comedy and sort of sadness um, responded like very well to that. A lot of people really like the soundtrack as well. Um, yeah. That's got a lot of really positive comments, uh, which is good. Um, yeah, so so early days is so you know so far so good. Everyone seems to be taking it the way it should have been taken, which is cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean that's that's the best thing you can hope for really <laughs> yeah i mean it was that th i was quite, i was very worried about the ending of it and sort of thinking because it's a big swing to go from you know point a to to point b and i didn't know if we would stick the landing on it um but yeah the people that have seen it so far have all seemed to think that it works which is awesome and really really um you know uh what's the word I don't know. Can't think of the word comforting, something <laughs> like those lines. But yeah, it's just it was something that I was very concerned about. So it's like, you know, yeah, cool. like a, like a relief. But you yeah. you absolutely you absolutely do stick the land, and then um, it's one of those ones that as I was watching it, I was I was laughing at sort of the absurdity of the situation, yeah. and then you do kind of like a couple of minutes in, five minutes in, you're sort of like, right, so what is this actually about? What's actually going yeah. on here? And then when you get that turn, I f I think it's pretty perfect to be honest. Oh, thanks. And, um, That's but would you and a lot of shorts should stay as shorts absolutely there's a lot of them that should because they're perfect at that length would you ever think about maybe taking this further um i don't know i i wonder we one thing we did joke about actually when we were filming it was whether we could do a nut kicker spin-off tv show where every week he goes off and like helps um you know inept men throughout the the world <laughs> um, that yeah, that is exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like, is it like Quantum Leap, where every week he goes in and I love that. And he kicks I love that. <laughs> Just a, a, a nut kicker vigilante. I'm, I'm up yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was that was the only sort of um, idea that we had. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to try and pitch it to uh, HBO, see if they're interested. Ah, uh, HBO would take that, and and if not, Channel Five probably would. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Either one's works, yeah. That's fine. So uh, you've already said that you've thrown um, your your next sort of shot over to the art guys, but yeah. 
what what are you what are you hoping to to do next and where does where does Dave go from here? Yeah, so I mean Nuts is the second short and it went well. Um so I still feel like I need to develop my confidence as a writer and as a director. Um so I'm always trying to get experience in other people's sets as well, whether it be acting or behind camera. So that's something I'm trying to, to get. But yeah, with the next short, it's gonna be very different. I, I went to um a talk uh, or like a Q and A thing with Ben Wheatley the other night. Nice. Yeah, and one of the things he sort of said was like every film he makes is at ninety degrees to the previous one, which um is something which I didn't kind of when he said that I didn't think oh yes now I'm going to do that as well. But I think <laughs> looking at the films that I've made, only two so far, but that's something that I kind of each one try and do something a bit different and add an extra challenge. So the next one's going to be a horror, um, which is going to be new for me um and is gonna be i think i'm gonna shoot it all in one take and just in close-up which is very <gasps> different to nuts which was like quite heavily shot listed and very much and and uh tried to keep the dialogue to a minimum in nuts actually whereas this one's gonna be quite dialogue heavy and very sound design heavy so that's the idea for the next one so yeah just just try and do that and then yeah whatever happens next the next one just do something a little bit different each time. Just try and develop those skills and build up my confidence as, as yeah, writing and directing. Um, and awesome. do some co-writes as well. Do some co-writing with some other writers too. Awesome, my man. Well, yeah. I want to start wrapping it up. But um, again, Dave, thank you so much for, for submitting nuts. Thank you so much for letting us have it at the festival. And thank you for doing this, of course. But um, one last question for you. Mm. You're on a desert island. What three movies are you taking with you? Okay. I won't overthink it. I'll just go off the top of my head. So I'll <laughs> say uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Oof. Um, The Wicker Man, and Raging Bull. So we're talking the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man. <laughs> of course. <laughs> is there any other? The bees! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen the Nicolas Cage one. Do you think I should? It's incredible. It yeah. is. I, I mean, it's peak Nicolas Cage, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah, I've um, seen that clip, obviously, but I haven't. Seen and, it. and I don't mean peak Nicolas Cage in the '90s, early 2000s. I mean peak Nicolas Cage now. <laughs> yeah, I really like um, Bad Lieutenant. Have you seen his uh, the? Paul yeah, Paul I think that that's was... like, that's Nick Cage let off the leash in a good way. Think yeah. Like yeah, yeah, it's a great film, man. But I mean, yeah. to be fair, I just love Nick Cage. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, actually, before I go, I, got, I do have one last question because you do say that you're sort of um, you're learning on the job, you're you're honing mm -hmm. your skills, and you're you're just working on getting better and everything. And at the festival, we tend to get lots of young people who are looking to get into the industry, looking to make their way, looking to find their first step. What advice so far that you've gained uh, from your knowledge and whatnot, what advice would you give to those people? Um, I mean, I think it's probably what, if you ask any creative to do it, you've just got to do it. Like, you, you know, whatever you have at your disposal, go and make it. So the first thing I made was literally I got my friend in a flat with a little digital SLR camera I had. And we, we made a film over like a course of a, a day and a half, I think it was um and then yeah then you've got something to show people and to show your potential i think that was what i was saying in that first film was just like i want to show people that i have potential um and that i think it achieved that so you know on the basis of my invisible friend you know alice and dan saw that which then led me into nuts and then and so on and so forth so yeah just just make something um you know and also the other thing i would probably say as well is like don't worry about being perfect and don't try and sort of um top what you've done before just make sure you're making it. And if you're making it, you'll you'll get better. Um, and yeah, and you're making something, which is what it is. Being a filmmaker is making films, right? So you just got to make yeah. the film. Love it. Love it. Yeah. It's the clues in the name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bit of Ron Seal there. Yeah. Well, well, again, Dave, um, let everyone know where they can find you, social media, all that kind of thing, where they can find your projects. And then we will wrap it out there. Yeah, I'm pretty awful with the social media, um, but I think I'm on Instagram and I think it is my initials. So DVD, G-R-D-N-R, like Dubbed Goodner is uh, is me on Instagram. <laughs> uh, or probably you can get like if you follow Arc Pictures, 
they're yeah. always very good with socials and they tag me and things so you'll find me on there well i'll be i'll be putting all the links into the descriptions and everything That's as well i'll find i'll find them for you and all that but uh absolutely uh again thank you for giving us the movie and thank you for letting us show it oh well no my pleasure and thank you so much for picking it it's great <laughs>